What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Outdoor Chef Life. I'm Taku and a few months ago Adam from Die Hard Fishing had this idea to go poke pulling for monkey face eels and then use them for bait for lingcod, live bait. So I want to give that a shot. When he did that he caught a huge one. Uh, you can check out that video. I'll leave a link in the description. But so I'm going to try that out today. So this morning I kicked out and first thing I did was go to the jetty and try to get a eel. There's a ton of leopard sharks hanging out here. There's two right here, right under me. There's another one right there. So I have my poke pole here, if you're not familiar, it's just a tomato stick with a coat hanger attached to the end, snap swivel, and a size 2 hook. And I got a little squid on there, and I'm going to see if I can catch a, uh, catch a monkey face prickleback. And why are we catching a monkey face prickleback? We're going to try to use them for bait. I know it's still pretty dark right now, so you probably can't see too much, but uh... You can at least see me catch. Just gotta find a good hole here. And that might be a good enough hole right here. This hole's too big. Oh, I got one. Got one, baby. Got, oh god, that's a rockfish. Oh, this will this will work too, actually. Let me grab my bucket. No, 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 no. Be right back. So we got a rockfish to start with. That'll be good for bait too, for lingcod. Now I'm gonna try to find a monkey face. Pretty good start. That was the first hole I chose. And that one, I don't think it's gonna have any eels in there because it's too big. You wanna find those small tight holes. Those are the ones that you're gonna find the monkey face in. About one minute in there, if nothing, we we'll move on. Let's go. All right, five more seconds, five. Four, three, two, one. Alright, move on. Look at the lights coming out now. I can't find any eels. Finally got one. Maybe too big. That's a freaking big one. So all I got was this one big monkey face eel. Uh, it might be too big, but who knows? Big bait, big fish. Let's hope so. 
So I'm gonna try to get a link caught on that. So I'm gonna go out to the spot. I'm trolling for salmon right now while I go I'll make my way to the spot for uh, lingcod and rockfish and if I get a salmon, great. Actually, I then I have to use barbless hooks if I get a salmon first. All right, let's rig this up. So I have the slider right here. I'm gonna put a weight on that. This goes to a, a barrel swivel and I'm gonna just tie on these hooks that I have. I have a giant freaking hook. Giant hook for a giant eel. And uh, another hook right there. That's about a, I think that's a two off hook. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to use a giant hook. You can just use a treble hook. I'm gonna just hook up this, try to hook up this eel. Oh man, that's gonna be tough. You know what, I think I'm gonna just uh, kill him actually. He's not gonna, it's not gonna go well if I try to fight him because he's so big and these freaking monkey face pricklebacks are so tough. Got him hooked. We're gonna need one big fish to take this bait. Snagged or big link on. Nah, it's snagged. So I fished with this monkey face eel for about an hour and a half, maybe two hours, but I didn't have any takers. So I switched to the rockfish that I caught and also sent that one down, but still uh, no link cod on the live bait. Well, no link cod, but I still have this monkey face prickle back. Uh, try to use it for bait, no luck. I think it's too big. So it has plenty of meat on the eel. Um, I haven't caught a link cod all year actually. So that's why I wanted to catch a link cod, but you know what? This monkey face prickleback will do. There's a ton of meat on it, so uh, we'll flay him up, and I'm gonna make some monkey face prickleback tomka, and I think that's gonna be delicious. So uh, let's get started, and let me show you the ingredients that I have right now. I have some. Let's see. The main ingredient here is this right here. This is called galangal, and this is important in tomka so uh had to go to several different stores to find this and i finally found it at 99 ranch so if you're looking for some galangal 99 ranch i found some and the next important ingredient i have is kaffir lime leaves and shout out to my friend cami uh, she hooked me up she had a, a kaffir lime leaf plant so i just went to her place and picked some kaffir lime leaves i guess another main ingredient is coconut milk i just have this coconut milk from trader joe's but uh, yeah, I think they're probably better ones. I don't know, my Southeast Asian people probably have a stronger opinion about what coconut milk is best. So let me know what's the, what's the best brand coconut milk that we can find here. Oyster mushrooms right here, straight from uh, the farmer's market. Some t garden tomatoes. Actually, I need some more tomatoes. I only have a few here. Um, yeah, let's get some more tomatoes real quick. Julian's right here. Oh, this one's good? Yeah. This one? Yeah. And how about this one? Yeah. Is that ready? Oh, yeah. This one looks good. All right, got some more tomatoes. I think that's enough. I also need um, pepper. Mm -hmm. And you happen to have some Thai pepper plants here. Oh, yeah. And lemongrass. Oh, yeah, lemongrass too. That's mm -hmm. an important ingredient. All right, these are pretty big. So I think I'm just going to use one or two. These are pretty spicy too. So got that and lemongrass. Let me go put this down. Yeah, there. Yeah, this lemongrass is a little small, but I think it should do. Now I'm gonna prep the vegetables first and then uh, fillet the eel because I don't want to get the cutting board all all messy before I prep the veg. So let's do the vegetables first. Gal and gal. Just gonna slice this up. say about seven or eight slices. Uh, I got some onion here. We're just gonna do some chunks of onion. Now uh, these oyster mushrooms, just gonna tear it. Tear it to little bite-sized pieces. I will just half the tomatoes. Get these limes ready. Just 
some cilantro that's the stem portion and I'll leave some of the leafy parts like that Put that off to the side gotta do the peppers just gonna do some chunks it's not meant to be a super spicy dish lemongrass just cut the leafy part off and you gotta beat it up first release those aromatics there we go just take the outer layer off I mean this is probably small enough that it's that even the outer layer is maybe tender yeah get some slices of lemongrass this is gonna add a lot of flavor a lot of lemoniness it smells just like Ooh. tonka <laughs> yeah it does yeah this smell really does make it oyster mushrooms limes onion lemongrass cilantro tomatoes galangal and thai chili peppers I'm gonna put a paper towel down just to keep it a little bit more less messy because uh, this guy has a full stomach so I think uh, he's gonna be filled with you know what it's pretty big he's got oh, such fat stomach and you can already see something coming out there all right let's fillet this I'm gonna use just my regular guto Alright, we gotta try to do this without breaking the stomach. If you break the stomach, does it ruin the meat too? Well, if you get the the meat gets all poopy, mm. then yeah, maybe. You could probably wash it off, but alright. There it is. I'm gonna take all of the guts out. Connects right here. I don't know what that is. What the heck is that? Is that eggs maybe? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. I know what this is though. All right, we managed to do that pretty clean. I'm gonna disconnect here. I'm just gonna take the spine out here. Okay, there's so much meat on those monkey face pricklebacks because the head is small compared to its body So you get a lot of meat. I'm just gonna pat dry this. I just washed it off with some salt water Just get that pat dried You know, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of water to that. All right, and then straight away, you can add the aromatics right here, the galangal. We'll add that in. We'll add the lemongrass. Oh, will put the onions in there too. You wanna just give this a gentle mix. Make sure it doesn't come to a full-on boil. 
I want to get it to a simmer and then I'm going to add the fish. We'll cut the fish into bite-sized pieces. Now I'm ready to add the fish in. The monkey face prickle back. Here we go. And the monkey face prickle back, I think is a good fish to do it with to make this something like this because it doesn't flake apart. It stays chunky like that, you see? You know, some fish, like if you use surf perch or something, you probably won't be able to make this. It'll probably just flake apart in there, you know, get all broken up. But this is nice and chunky. Okay, I'm gonna also add the tomatoes, chilies. Uh, let's add mushrooms as well. Let's get that all in there. Get the mushrooms in there. Ooh. Nice, full pot, baby. Full pot, oh yeah. Ooh, this is gonna be good. I got some fish sauce here. No, just a little, just a little. Right now I'm gonna add some kaffir lime leaves. And for this, you just tear this apart. Just tear it in there. It brings out the aromatics. Boom. And I'm using probably like 10 leaves. Sounds like a good amount. Oh yes. Oh, it smells so good. Oh. I love that. This doesn't take long to cook. You just have to wait for the fish to cook and it's pretty much done. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. Yeah, probably a teaspoon. And I'm also gonna add a little bit of sugar. That should be good. Ooh, that's tasty. <laughs> okay, that's good. I'm gonna cut the heat, I think that's done. I'm gonna add some lime juice now. That was three limes, let me just check the flavor. That's perfect. Three limes is perfect. Add some cilantro. And there we go, it's done. We just need to serve it. A little cilantro garnish. Monkey face, the old Tom Kha. All right, well here it is guys. Here's the monkey face, the old Tom Kha. Mmm, this is gonna be good. All right, let me, oh. Oh, by the way, look at this beer. Shout out to Kylie. Got me the very exclusive, plenty for president 2020. Double dry hopped. Ooh. I'm actually doing wine today. Or a wine cooler, I should say. Oh, yes. I'm the like holding it pour. out to this one, but looking at that one. <laughs> <laughs> perfect pour. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Kylie. Oh, this is good. Hmm. Mm. Mm. I went straight for the eel, and it's fully cooked, and that's good. That's really good. Let me show you guys. Now look at that. Is the monkey face eel right there? Mmm, mm. that's the stuff. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Thai food is one of our favorite too. Oh, yeah. Thai food, love Thai food, and Tom Kha is like one of the main mm -hmm. staple soups of Thai cuisine. Citrusy, acidic, uh, liminess. Yeah, you know, with the with the lemongrass and the kaffir lime leaves and the lime juice all combined together. Yeah. That's delicious. Mm. It was an adventure to get the galanga. Got a side of rice too, of course. Mm. Put a little, some rice, get some eel, get some mushroom. Mm. Right. And like I said, this monkey face prickleback, 
if you prepare it properly it has no like stinkiness or anything like that it just tastes like a very nice clean white fish and um, it holds together well that's why it works well in soups mm. oh yeah this is great mm -hmm. isn't that good like damn tomka tomka's good tomka's the best because the best all the lime leaves and stuff you're not really meant to eat them and the gall and gall it's just all for flavor you can just put it off to the side you don't have to eat it how would you describe gall and gall uh, <clears throat> i have no idea like a young a young ginger kind of <laughs> it's a very faint faint flavor but you can definitely smell it and taste it but it's not like a heavy flavor mm-hmm yeah it's like it's almost not, a light floral. But. Yeah, light floral flavor. So no lingcod this time. I'll get them next time. I might get another salmon. Actually, so what happened is this week I actually, oh, I also caught a salmon too. But uh, I can't post that one for a little bit longer because I'm going to do, well, I'm doing a collaboration with an artist. I'll tell you that. And it's going to be freaking awesome. Um, so that salmon is yet to be is that to be cooked or uh, anything else because I'm waiting for uh, my artist friend Dwight to come up here he's up he'll be up there in a week actually this week and we're gonna do an awesome collaboration and you'll see soon enough what, what we have in store I'm excited for that one me too I'm excited to see how it's done mm -hmm. all right guys well thank you so much for watching another episode uh, it's getting dark out here so Thank you for watching and oh if you want a shirt right here some outdoor chef life merch the ocean provides on one sleeve outdoor chef life in japanese on the other sleeve uh on my website outdoorcheflife.com yeah restock so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next time peace let me get a little more still a lot all right good let me get oh yeah let me get a little more and some rice too. Or I'll eat your rice.